Good morning. Lots of people out this morning to see the sunrise. Beautiful sunrise, second Sunday of Easter. By the way, the Greek, the Orthodox churches are actually uh, celebrating Easter Sunday today because of the different calendars. And there was an Orthodox guide here yesterday who left for Jerusalem to be with his family for this beautiful celebration. And here we have all this good people. Oh, wow, look who's here. Mountain. Do you want to be on camera? Welcome back to Magdala. And this is your wife, is it? Uh, sorry, a new pilgrim, another pilgrim. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm Honey Joe Kelly. Oh, you're Kelly. I'm a Kelly. Nobody's perfect, don't worry. I know. I didn't start out that way. <laughs> Not only is she on pilgrim, she's been on 13 pilgrims. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. How many pilgrims do you have this time, Mountain? Uh, 18. 18 pilgrims. God bless them. I was making, I was trying to list everybody last night in my head. And I've only got 16. So. Hey, so what are you doing here? Brother Hello, Father uh, Michael, Michael, Michael Baggett. I was coming out with Talbot, who was a saint in Ireland. Oh, saint Matt Talbot, but Baggett and Talbot, there's kind of a rhyme. And Father, Father Michael, you're a professor in Rome, is that right? Let's get a bit of sunshine on your face here and on these good <laughs> pilgrims. So where are you from originally? I grew up in Virginia, in the United States. I didn't grow up yet. <laughs> and where are you from, Mountain? Uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And this Kelly, new Kelly lady. I'm from Albany, New York. From Albany? Wow. Very good. Very good. So how many days will you be here with us? Only two nights this time. Two nights. That's Easy good. Weeks. Welcome. <laughs> well, I only have 16 years so far. <laughs> so today is Divine Mercy Sunday. And we had a very big celebration yesterday. We had um, five bishops and a bunch of priests and pilgrims from a lot of places, including Cyprus. And we had, um, we celebrate Mary Magdalene's feast day on um, the Saturday of the Easter octave. And then we had also the blessing of our visitor center with the patriarch. Well, look, let me tell you something. If we're alive next year, it will be on the Saturday of the Easter octave. And if we go to the following year, it will be on the Saturday of the Easter octave. And on the following year, so now, for now, oh, and the you, you can't. Yes, so then, <laughs> so, then, <laughs> so then you can't blame me next year if you said, how did I didn't know that? Because I told you now with the year, of, almost year of anticipation. Yes. And we have record here, and we have you pointing that out. Very good. Well, we stayed here we on the Saturday. This is my first time to stay. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. So we're going to go ahead and do our little piece about the Divine Mercy Sunday. What are you a professor of? I teach bioethics. Oh, bioethics. Wow, that's a tough subject, really. Maybe we talk about that tomorrow. <laughs> so, by the mercy of God. Yes. By the mercy of God. Very good. And God bless you. Did you see the reflection of the sun on the window? Just come down a bit more here, and you can see the... Um, the light shining on the window. The more you come down. How, how do you like that? And then at night time, when all the lights are on inside, it's completely dark. There's a very beautiful picture to have. I'm sure it'll be on your Instagram. Yeah, we turn off, you know, before 10, 9.30, 10. See you later, alligators. That's not for you guys, okay? That was, that was just for them. So uh, we had a great day yesterday. Thanks be to God. And today also a lot of things happening. Even Italian television wants me out there. The sisters are praying. Let's see if they're singing.
Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwell me no hearts, both now and forever. Amen. Has truly risen. Alleluia. Looks like it's wet. Are you coming in, Brad? Good morning. Good morning. I'm checking the wind report when I went out this morning. Uh -huh. It was absolutely glass. So it's changed now? And out in the middle, the waves are a foot and a half. Really? Feet tall. Yeah. Well, why is that? It's going to come to the north, I'm not sure. It's wind, is it? Yeah. But there was nothing. Uh -huh. Now we go. Uh-huh. Yeah. Very good, Brad. Yeah. Well, I, I saw your, your message there. Uh, I mean, I saw the, the note that you had seen the, the announcement for the sunrise drone chapter. I didn't get out to do a paddle. Maybe we'll try tomorrow morning. We'll see. I have uh, Italian television today, and I need to get ready for this morning. So I wasn't able to. God bless you. Oh, there's two more sisters over here. Looking at the shells and the sunrise. people the waves of divine mercy of God's love for us in our suffering he comes to meet us in our fears locked behind our doors Thomas I know I understand that you're not you have doubts put your finger in my side put your hand in my put your finger in my wounds with my hands put your Put your hand in my side and believe. I understand you have a hard time believing, Thomas. Relax, shalom, peace. I'm not here to condemn, I'm here to give life. Life in abundance. Soak it up, soak up this life. Soak it up personally yourself, soak it up together in your community and your family. What a message. Bishop Barton in his message, his homily for today, has uh, the definition of Thomas Aquinas on what is mercy. And mercy is the Mercy is the is compassion for people in their suffering. And this is God. This is why he became flesh. This is why he spoke to Abraham. The whole plan to redeem mankind. And this has generated in turn a great movement of mercy through history. To learn compassion for people in their suffering. Can you really say learn? There's probably an almost immediate uh, instinct. The only time that it doesn't happen is when there's hardness of heart toward people. And sometimes people say they got their comeuppance. And it can be on different scales and in different intensities. But the human heart that has any little bit of cultivation responds to mercy and particularly if we're the ones in the suffering side we want mercy toward us we want to be excused we want to be understood we want to be 
Treat it gently, treat it kindly. Treat it patiently, treat it gradually. And the fruit of a community that lives like that, we see it in the Acts of the Apostles reading. That they live together, communal life, sharing, just like families do. You don't pay for your sandwich in the family. You don't emphasize my, you emphasize ours. You respond to the tears of the other. The abuse of a family is very hard, very hard thing. And the Acts of the Apostles also talk about that in other texts. But today we're contemplating divine mercy and its fruits in humanity. All the flowers of tenderness that come forth. And there's an amazing culture of that in the service of so many nurses and doctors in hospitals. All the staff that take care, the triage, they take care of all the wounds and so many different aspects shock therapy trauma post-trauma stress all these things thanks be to god there's so much development of mercy in culture at the same time there's a lot of brutality but let's focus on developing and building up the culture of mercy where there are no flowers and vegetables sown in the garden there are no weeds Let's fill our world with acts of mercy. Divine Mercy Sunday. It's great that we have a day focusing on mercy. With everybody. With the criminal. With the elderly. With the little child. A mercy that respects the true identity of the person. God knows our fears and he comes to give us that peace, that shalom. And Peter's letter is fascinating. It's a, a later generation of mature Christian community. And if we look, it's the first three or four lines of his letter, the first letter of Peter. After the psalm that we read, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love is everlasting. And if you just read this letter, it's so filled. It's like uh, bursting at the seams with awareness of the gifts. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope. A new birth to a living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. 
in this you rejoice although for now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials so that the genuineness of your faith tested by fire more precious than gold may prove to be for praise glory and honor although you have not seen him you love him even though you do not see him now you believe in him you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith the salvation of your souls people this is amazing the new life coming out of the desert of our souls of our societies of the war zones the war zones from the kitchen counter to the international scene a new world a new society and it's built not on human power it's built on the gift of the resurrection and the gift of forgiving love your sins are forgiven and he even commissioned him to go out and forgive sins God is not into punishment he's into forgiveness and obviously this requires us to repent and to change but the gift is awaiting us divine mercy what an extraordinary gift. People, may you have the fullness of Easter in your hearts, in your minds, in your soul, in your emotions, no matter what the difficulties are, what the challenges are today. beautiful act of kindness training this bugambili up this tree so just give it another year and let's see how good it will be god willing happy easter happy divine mercy sunday god bless you see you later alligators